Hi, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Aaron Arcellas and I am electronics engineer in Allen Space. We all would like to be there with you, and I must admit it's a strange feeling talking to a screen. But anyway, it's an honor for us to be in this cyberspace edition of the IAC Congress. The title of this paper is Development of a DBBS2 Small Satellite Transmitter, a new case of real-time video. So let's start. First thing first. What is DBBS2? DBBS2 is a standard for satellite broadband applications developed in 2003. It is very efficient in terms of bandwidth and it provides powerful forward error correction system allowing a quasi error free operation very close to the channel limit. New modulation schemes were added and with flexible input stream adapter and variable and adaptive coding and modulations DBBS2 can adjust transmission parameters of individual frames based on channel conditions. It is also recommended by CCSDS as a solution for high data rate telemetry. Furthermore, there are a lot of commercial receivers on the market, making the reception very straightforward. So, is this a standard new in small sats? What have been done? Well, Planet Labs, for instance, has developed the high, data, high speed downlink 2 which is the latest generation of the radios on board 3U CubeSats. Among its key features, we can find X-band operation and the DBBS2 standard with adaptive modulation encoding. Another great example of relevance of this standard is that NASA is currently demonstrating the use of DBBS2 for the Near Earth Network as a solution for the needs of small spacecrafts to employ high data rates and power-efficient modulation and coding techniques. And now let's dive into our case of study for this paper. The mission objective is to transmit and receive on-ground continuous real-time HD video from a small satellite. While we are not selecting a specific video payload, we presume it provides a high-resolution video source. Some video encoders allow the user to modify the encoded bitrate on the fly, and this feature fits our model of dynamic rate transmitter nicely. For transmission and reception, our totem software-defined radio is a perfect choice. Basically, it will be in charge of the reception of the video from the payload and to generate the DBBS2 signal for transmission. An additional app converter and front-end are considered as external modules to the reach the Earth Exploration Satellite Service Band. A return channel is needed for control the adaptive coding and modulation, and this is done on the same totem software-defined radio with a low data rate uplink channel for telecommand. And finally, our ground station has a very simple approach. Based on commercial components, we will use a dish antenna plus an LNV, which performs a frequency down conversion to deliver the signal to a DBBS2 PCI Express card connected to a computer. Our satellite, named LAC from Celtic mythology, is located in a LEO orbit at 500 kilometers in a sun synchronous orbit. And we are considering two ground stations one located in Allen Space Headquarters near Vigo, Spain, and another one located in Cork, Ireland. At some point, some handover between the stations is performed. With this scenario in mind, let's think about the link budget and what we can do with the link adaptation. For these calculations, we are considering the change shown in the diagram, with the parameters in the table. In order to understand the benefits of using DBBS2 with a link adaptation, capabilities, we have compared the performance of the system with static modulation and coding selection and its performance with dynamic mod code depending on the link status at every moment of the pass. The analysis was made for two different passes over the ground station selected, a low elevation, worst case, and a high elevation, our best case. So, in the best case scenario, first of all, we consider that a link can be established when the link margin is higher than 3 dB. On the right, we saw the results of applying the link adaptation mechanism to maximize the performance of the link during the complete pass. A run selection of a modulation and coding and codification scheme could lead to a loss of many passes, which could have been used with another scheme with higher margin but less efficiency. On the contrary, many good passes could be underused if the selection is a low efficiency mod code. Here is the same approach of the last slide but apply to the selected low elevation pass. Please note that this pass has a maximum elevation of 17 degrees, and yet we still can achieve remarkable rates with a smart selection of mod cuts. 
This table summarizes the performance of the system with fixed mod code selection and link adaptation. As you can see, the link duration and the total data transmitted in both cases, the result of dynamic adjustment is beneficial. So what about the transmitter? We have already implemented in Totem and is inside the FPGA. First of all, the stream adapter is in charge of converting the desired stream to be transported into baseband frames and it is also in charge of multiplexing different streams. After that, channel coding block, the most complex block of the transmitter, is what makes DBBS2 a quasi-error-free system. Then the output of this block goes into the constellation mapper that generates the complex symbol defined by the corresponding mod code. And finally, we reach the physical layer block. Pilot blocks, some scrambling, and physical layer header is added here. And then the pulse shaping block applies filter for band limiting the transmitted signal which is delivered to the IQ modulator. But user may want to aggregate different data streams through the same transmitter, video, telemetry or data from secondary payloads. Using a different version of the stream adapter adds support for multiple input streams, each with different defined priorities which brings the capability of performing traffic balancing. Also, the transmitter can control the mod code selection of individual frames depending on the source of stream with information received by the return channel. This capability opens a new applications like the fusion of images, video and aided, that aided value data from other payloads. For example, the capture of asset tracking data with AIS or ADCB may be of interest if combined with real-time images or video of an area. But obviously, there are some challenges that need to be resolved. To keep real-time video with a LEO satellite, a handover between ground stations needs to be done. And the challenge here is to perform this handover between stations in a reliable way without interruption of the communication. Another great challenge is the reception side. DBBS2 receivers are much more complex than transmitters, so the use of market-available receivers simplifies the implementation a lot. They usually work in an intermediate frequency in L-band in conjunction with L and Vs. Outside the typical broadcast satellite TV frequencies means the need of a custom solution for replacing the standard L and V. However, this is not an usual situation while designing a satellite ground station. And now let's see a real example using our software-defined radio totem for the BBS2 transmission. We've been using Totem for a while as a multiplication payload. Its wide frequency range and multiple radio frequency ports allow to use Totem for different purposes in the same mission. Last one, Luma 1. Its main objective was the detection and monitor of wildfires remotely using IoT. But with that two CubeSat, Totem could also have performed spectrum monitoring in UHF and S-Band and perform aircraft tracking with ADCB as well. But what about DBBS2 on Totem? We have performed several tests with different type of data and sources in our lab. For the setup, we have connected Totem directly to a commercial DBBS2 receiver through an LMB using SBAM. As a for example, we can receive AIS data through, through our VHF front end and send this data through the DBS2. In a similar way, we can transmit video using a video file stored in memory. Other types of data were also transmitted, such as payload data or space packet telemetry. All of them can be combined, multiplexed, and each service can be treated independently according to channel conditions, so different modules can be applied to each frame. So, to end with some conclusions here, DBBS2 is a standard very convenient for a small satellite real-time video application. We can multiplex multiple services and accommodate our resources depending on channel conditions. But for LEO satellites, some challenges need to be tackled, such as the handover between ground station or the use of commercial receivers. We have developed a DBBS2 transmitter in our software-defined radio, Totem, and it has been successfully tested using different data types and sources, from video files, payload data, such as AIS, to space packets telemetry. All of these tests have shown the flexibility of Totem as a multi-application payload and demonstrate its capacity for DBBS2 transmission. And that's all for me, but I would like to thank the rest of the authors and the entire Allen Space team. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye.